kids with disabilities have just as much to offer and can help just as much. You just have to find a way to create that safe environment. 20 years after the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, a civil rights act, people with disabilities continue to seek full integration into all parts of community life. We all have a disability. All of us, every each and one of us have a disability. Their success depends upon communities being welcoming, respectful, and flexible. Communities that are disability aware in integrating people with disabilities into working, living, and socializing. For Montespirit, I would say, respect on others, respect yourself and your teacher. Un consejo para las maestras. Advice for the teachers, always have patience like they had with my children. Treat us just like you would treat any other of your students. It is our students today who will be the community leaders of the future. We, the teachers and adults in their lives, need to teach our children to be disability aware, and it will be essential in order to successfully reach our vision of ensuring people with disabilities are a natural part of the community. You see people in a different light. You can see their abilities and not their disabilities. My name is Sarah Armour. I'm 29 years old and I work at JJ's List as an office assistant. Great, and I'll send the invoice to you as soon as I get it. Thanks so much. Here's what I remember about elementary school. I got bullied a lot. I think the teachers could have been more aware of the teasing that went on behind their backs. They have a responsibility to that child if that child is in their room to understand their disability. So reinforcing that you're smart, you're not dumb, you know, because I thought I was dumb and ill-educated and stupid and, and retarded for, you know, many years of my childhood because I heard that time and time again from kids. However, I had a lot of great teachers that understood how bright I was. They pushed me to do things out of my comfort zone. But disability awareness, just being aware that people with disabilities are just like everyone else. They have feelings, they may not express them in the same way. You just have to take more time and treat them just like anybody else. So I've come a long way and I did college and I graduated with a BA in sociology. So everything that I've done it's great, and in spite of, you know, my LD or my panic disorder, it didn't stop me because I didn't let it. I am Ernie Bush, and I, and I am 21 years of age, and I work at Loyola Family Medical Practice. I was up, and then we'll have you put the toilet paper in that, um, the area so it's off of the floor. Sound good? Yes, it does, it does. Okay. I take out the trash, and I empty linen bags, and I also work with the biohazard bags as well. Grade school, it was great. Parts I liked and parts I did not like. My biggest challenge was reading. My mind didn't adapt like any other child in that school. It took a little bit time for me to learn. I learned a little slower than any other child in that school. I'm not ashamed to say it was hard. It was hard. I had I needed a lot of help, a lot. And that's where a lot of my anger and sadness and mixed frustration came from because I had certain teachers that would help me but not all of them. They told me I would never be able to read. I would it was written in stone. They literally told me I would never be able to read at all. My mentor 
made a very big difference in my life. Now, that's the man that really knew my disability and really took the time to know me. He took the time to not only know my disability, he took the time to know me. If it were not for the help that I had from the social workers and mentors, I would probably never learn how to read. But now I love, I love to read. Just don't discourage the child, help them. Sit down with them and take their time, take your time to really help them. And treat them with respect and dignity as you would treat others. Kids with disability, they, they learn different, but they will learn the work just like I did. My name is Jake Yale. I'm 39 years old. Link read more. Space L I K E. I like to play around on the computer. 328 2044 location. And I also like to listen to music and take walks. I did like my elementary school very much. I liked my teachers. Disability awareness means including people with disabilities, talking to them directly rather than to somebody who is with them and we don't need to be shouted at. Teachers can clear out all the aisles so that it is easier for somebody using a cane or wheelchair. Be comfortable around us and talk to us like you would anybody. My full name is Alyssa Brandau. I was born on April 1st, 1986. I work here in um, the YMCA, helping little kids, teach them how to swim. I'm a co-instructor. We help them with their skills, and that's what we do in the pool, is to learn the skills. What I do for fun, I like to dance, I like to um, hula hoop, I like to hang out with my friends, I like to go out to movies, I'm very active, I'm in Special Olympics. I just moved into my, my new apartment, and I love it. It's very nice. Well, I remember in kindergarten, my teacher thought I couldn't read, so when I raised my hand, she never caught on me. And so I was just my mom and the principal's office, and so when my teacher came to the office, I found one of my favorite books was Nelson's, like, can you read a book for us, Alyssa? And so in front of everybody in the office, so I did that. My teacher was, was just looked at me and said, wow, she can, she can read. I n never believed in it. I just had to learn it in a different way and, and, and a slower pace so they could understand me. My advice is for the teachers to have high ex expectations and learn about the, the person and the student get to know them better. You're doing a good job of folding those clothes. Thank you very much. My name is Jacqueline Connor Caples, and my daughter's name is Bracklin Caples. She is 22 years old. I need you to fold those clothes quickly, okay? She likes like fashion that? shows. So I put in, the, in her first fashion show, and she stole the show, and everybody was clapping and screaming and she loved it. She loved it. She loves fashion shows. Bracken went to two elementary schools. Those experiences that she had with her aide was, you know, is invaluable for, for a child with a disability. She helped her learn to run, to walk, to talk. She learned her colors. She learned her ABCs. She learned her name. Yeah. As a parent, what I needed most from the staff, from her elementary school teachers and the staff members, 
is support. Parents support. They talked about what the expectations did we have? How did we try to get there? What's our long-term goal with the students that we wanted to have with our children? So those were things that I thought was very important. One thing about children with disabilities, they can pick up if you don't like them. They can tell if you're sincere or not sincere. What you gonna do at the pretty shop? Do nails, wash your hair, do nails. Wash your hair, do nails. Yeah. That they would teach you something that you would never believe you could learn, but you can learn a lot from them. My name is Tim Finnegan and I'm 18 years old. Hello. Here are theaters upstairs. Right now I currently have two part-time jobs at McDonald's and I also work at AMC Theaters. I do ushering where I clean theaters and I've also been a greeter who takes tickets. And sometimes I've even worked the concession stand. There is one medium popcorn. Excellent, thank you very much. Enjoy your movie. Appreciate it. I have a musical family. The instruments I play are the piano, guitar, the ukulele, the banjo, the mandolin, the accordion, the tuba, the sousaphone, the trumpet, the clarinet, the flute, and the saxophone. Those are 12 instruments. There are some that I'm just learning, but some that I'm really good at. Yeah, I liked elementary school, but there were some parts that were difficult about elementary school. Sometimes I felt mad or frustrated. There was a time when I used to scream down the hallway when I was really upset or mad about something, but then the social worker helped me figure out the situation and helped me feel better. Well, I think if the teacher or principal or bus driver or all the people who work in a school know a student with a disability, they should get to know the person a little bit to understand them. And it's also good to teach students to self-advocate so they can learn about what kind of person they are and so that they can understand their disability. Like if it's a supervisor or someone I meet at a college or high school, a new teacher, then I, I would want the people to know who I am and what kind of accommodations I need. Sometimes the teachers might be afraid to ask a question because they might not want to hurt his or her feelings, but for people who have disabilities, it's, you don't need to be afraid to ask a question. You're in theater number three, which is to your left. My name is Nura Ali, I'm 26, and I'm working towards getting my music teacher certification. Music has been the place where I felt that I belonged. It gave me a place where I was more than just the girl in the chair. It's given me a place where no matter what, I'm more than just my disability. I remember my first really good experience with a teacher was fourth grade. Um, she was the first teacher that really spent time looking for my strengths. In elementary school was when I started playing violin in the orchestra. I think it's really important for teachers to have high expectations of everyone, um, disabled or not. It wasn't until teachers challenged me that the world opened up. I've been playing violin for 17 years now. I got my bachelor's degree in music from DePaul University two years ago, and I'm now at Northeastern Illinois University getting my teacher certification in music. I have a goal of teaching kids with disabilities music too. I feel that it gave me such great joy and potential in my life that I'd like to give that to others. And remember that everybody has something to offer. While it's good to teach your able-bodied students to be good helpers, don't put it in a position of, oh, let's ho help the poor cripple kid. 
And if you make students, even teachers, anybody aware of disability, then the barriers will start tumbling down and stereotypes will go away and it'll just be a much easier world for all of us to coexist. I'd like to further emphasize the importance of creating and maintaining a disability aware environment here in our Chicago Public Schools, both for our staff as well as for our students. A disability aware environment increases the likelihood that all of our students will have the tools needed to create full, independent lives completely integrated into their communities. As a Chicago Public Schools employee, I fully understand the way that sometimes our work can be fast-paced and rather overwhelming. Even in this climate, it is essential that we stop, pause, and take the time to fully engage with our students that we are supporting, both with and without disabilities. By practicing the techniques of person-first language, universal design for learning, and active listening, we not only provide better learning environments for our students, but also become change agents. With time, these concepts become more than just methods to apply, but they become embedded components of our culture. Students take their cues from the adults in their lives. When the staff and teachers of the Chicago Public Schools create disability-aware school environments, all children benefit. Students without disabilities learn to accept diversity as a natural part of life. Students with disabilities want to be treated just like everybody else. And if that happens starting in school, it has a much better chance of happening for the rest of their lives.